judging. I'm Laura Davenport and this is Fawn Smiths. We're co-owners of Tulip Tree Creamery. Um, I'm going to do a quick picture slideshow so you know a little bit about who we are. Um, and then we'll go right into the demonstration. So um, I'm, as I said, Laura Davenport. I'm co-owner of Tulip Tree Creamery. Um, here's a couple pictures. I like to do pictures so you can kind of see uh, versus reading words. But when I'm not at a fortune fish show, I'm usually out feeding people cheese, creating cheese plates, coordinating classes, um, and so forth, or doing farmer's markets. Um, Fonz is going to talk a little bit about him. Yeah, so, so um, I'm from the Netherlands. I'm from the old way, the northern part, uh, the province of Friesland. It's dairy country, as you can see it, although we are getting some tulips in there right now, too. And um, so I've been here. I've been basically working in dairy processing uh, for over 25 years now around the world and um, went to many different places. Um, as you can see, a, a couple pictures up there. I, was, I spent about five years in Tanzania setting up a dairy co-op, uh, all little dairy centers, a whole dairy sector. Did some consulting in Kenya, Malawi, and a lot of different countries over there. Also went to Mongolia, some cheese making over there. The bottom three are from the US. I help a lot of small-scale cheese makers in the US as well with consulting. So I've been, uh, I've been around a little bit. Here are some companies I actually worked with. Uh, when I came to the US, I, uh, I came here to set up and help Traders Point Creamery. They were in production for two weeks, and then I got them going. I helped them to develop their, their main line of products. They're known for the yogurts, the flavored yogurts. That's what I developed for them. Then the cheeses, the hard cheeses, the soft cheeses, the ice creams. From there, um, I focused more on the consulting, and I went to the other company, which is right here in Illinois, is Ludwig Farmstead Creamery. Uh, that's a Farmstead Creamery, helped to set that creamery up, worked there for about three years, a nice line of uh, raw milk cheeses. Worked with uh, developing Teton Valley Creamery, a beautiful area. Unfortunately, the creamery had to close because of personnel. We, they could not find cheesemakers, so that's a, that's a very difficult thing. And of course, when I, the first time when I came here was actually to work for Calgo Creamery. That was a long time. That, when I came out of Tanzania, I went to Calgo Creamery, worked there for two years, and helped them very much on focusing on getting their fresh cheeses going, uh, re a recipe de developed and everything. But the main cheeses, like the, what they became f known for was like the Mount Tam. That's what I helped develop for them. And we ran into the Red Hawk as well. That was the last, that was the last one when I left, and then they took it from there. Then two years ago, we started Tulip Tree Creamery. And uh, because everybody was starting to ask me and say, why are you doing this for other people? It's time for yourself. And uh, we had a good talk and say, okay, now is it. Let's go for it. And what we wanted to do is focus on a whole different line of cheeses than what we have been doing. So far, I've, I've made a lot of hard aged cheeses. So we said about in the Midwest, if we want to do something a little different, let's do a specialty cheeses, something which you don't really find a lot of. And that's exactly what we have done. So everything is handmade. We focus very much on maintaining the handcraft. Everything is like it's small batches, and it takes a lot of work. And so far in these two years, I've done over 53,000 of those little square cheeses. And when you put it together, it sounds like a lot. And everything came through your hands. And, but it's great. And we expect that in the next year, we do another 53,000. So, but you can see we do some fresh cheeses too. We spread them all with herbs on them. Everything is totally handmade. It takes a lot of work. This morning I was making cheese too before I drove up here. And, uh, but that's what it takes, so. Here you go, Laura. So we're located about three hours south of here in Indianapolis on the northwest side of Indy. We obtain all of our milk from a single family farm that has been around since the 60s. It's a lot here, Hill Dairy in Seymour, Indiana. See a picture of, the, of John here in the middle and his family here on the bottom right hand corner. We've been working with him since the Traders Point days. So about 12 years we've been uh, in a, uh, have some association with our farmer. He is in the process of becoming humane certified also with his Holstein animals. Um, from the milk, we make 
Well, I've mislabeled this. Top left, we do butter, fresh mozzarella, some fresh um, nettle and fromage frais. The nettle um, and fromage just won um, ACS awards at the American Cheese Society. We have award-winning cheeses now. Our trillium um, on the top left here is our bloomy rind triple cream cheese, and it just won the first place at the Illinois State Fair this summer. So. Um, we've got three other cheeses uh, pictured here, our Fox Club, which is our washed rind, double cream cheese, our uh, Trillium, I'm sorry, our Tiger Lily, and our Dutchman's Breeches are two of our newer cheeses that we have at our booth, so come and sample all of our cheeses today. And then we do some um, short age cheeses, our Haymades, which is our Alpine style, and then our beer cheese, which is um, a unique style of beer cheese where we add um, different um, microbrewery beer to our um, milk to make these cheeses, so it's a little bit different. And um, we generally get the beer from a local brewery in the Indiana or Illinois. Um, we're associated with um, the Good Food Merchant Guild and the American Cheese Society, and um, Slow Food recognizes as an honoree, as well as in Indianapolis, we won the Best of Indy uh, 2015 for our fresh cheeses. Okay. So. Great, so we do a little bit of fresh mozzarella, and mainly what we do right now is we sell it on the farmer's markets. Uh, right now we have a little bit of difficulty getting that through the winter. I don't know why it is, but suddenly in, uh, around Indy, people stop eating fresh mozzarella when the tomatoes are gone. So we kind of focus on from kind of spring till fall till we do some, uh, uh, we make the fresh mozzarella. The plan is that we're actually gonna expand that into next year when we, uh, we have to significantly increase production and that's where we can really hope that we can also do some curds as well so people can stretch their own. Now one thing is what we do too is like we also started classes of mozzarella making and when people follow the classes at our creamery, they, it's a totally hands-on experience and they do exactly the same as what we do when we make our curd. Making mozzarella is following the same steps. What you do is, you, of course, you get some good milk, and this is usually where things go wrong is when you don't get the right milk quality in. So top quality milk is the best thing to get. We pasteurize it, then what we do is we add the ingredients. We work with citric acid. You can also do cultures, but cultures take a little bit longer. It has a little bit different flavor, and it just gives a slightly different mozzarella, but we prefer right now to work with a, a direct set, which is called with citric acid. It's nice, you put it in there, and then you put the rennet in there, it sets, you cut it up, you make the curds, you get some whey out, and then it's basically ready for stretching. And what you then get is basically this. And it looks a little weird now because we put the curds in a, in a kind of a cheese mold to kind of press it a little bit. And then if you have a lot of it, you can actually put it right in the freezer. Works totally fine. Pull it the, day, uh, the night out before, and it will defrost and then you can stretch it as well. You can also just put it, after making, you can put it in a cold room, stretch it that day. And that's basically how the whole make is. We, we put about 14 days on it and, and that's about it. So, yeah? We don't. Some people do, but we don't. Yeah. So when it comes down to the making of the mozzarella, when you start stretching it, there are a couple little things which we can do. The, the, of course, the quality of the milk is a big thing. When things go wrong, it's like if you work with milk from the store, like homogenized milk, um, you know, pasteurized, has been old, sitting around already for quite a while, that usually does not want to work as well for mozzarella making. The fresher, the better. That's the key thing. The pH is crucial. That's another thing where when people make mozzarella at home where things go wrong is that they don't hit the right sourness. So those are the two crucial things where people usually mess up at home, which is very difficult to measure because how do you get fresh milk and how do you know that pH? And so those are the key things. The water which you're gonna use for stretching is usually in a range from about 180 to 200 degrees. And it does make a difference. And it's very important, the, the relation between how much water and what temperature of the water to how much curd and how cold that curd is and how you blend that up. That's how it really it makes a uh, makes a good stretch and usually the first one what I do is kind of testing out test a little bit to see okay this is how much this is the ratio I need to have and then next on it goes pretty quick many times also the water the the, the way which is kind of left after stretching the mozzarella I many times use that to heat up the curd and, and when you pre-warm that curd a little bit it stretches so much easier and um, and it will take a little bit of time. Most people, when they're, uh, when they're trying to stretch this, they're struggling with trying to make the perfect ball. <laughs> and, and what I do is I actually use these big gloves. 
I don't know why, and on YouTube, you see all these guys doing this with bare hands, and I, I just cannot do that. So, so what you do is you just grab some curds, and you break that apart. And what we do is with the people, too, when they're in the classes, we really want them to uh, taste the curds and then taste the mozzarella afterwards. So if, if you want to taste them, feel free to taste them. Because what, that's the nice thing is that everything changes so fast. Then what you do is, so you break it up, and it doesn't have to, there's no preciseness about that. What you do is you just break it up, and then you put some salt on it. And most of that salt is going to disappear. So you don't have to worry too much that you're oversalted. And I think and usually uh, mozzarella goes on other products. So they put it on salads or something. So you can always season it later on. So that's the nice thing. So usually don't overdo it with, with the salt. I work with uh, two little kettles. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I, use, uh, I, I use regular salt for this. But I don't use the salt which has the additives to it. I, I like to work with the pure salt. I, I, we do use sea salt, but the sea salt we use for uh, other cheeses, like our spreadable cheese, for the butter. That's why we put the sea salt in. Yeah. So what you have to be careful for is that if you take boiling water, put that on it, you have a chance that you get a lot of fat separation out of it, so you don't want to do that. Um, so you be a little bit careful that you don't put actually boiling water on it. But somewhere between 180 to 200 degrees, you know, that's, that usually is a pretty good range. And then what you do is you just kind of pour it in. If it's very hot, you can kind of start pouring it, it uh, right, right along the sides. And then it's basically just put your hands in it. And then very soon, you're going to see that structure completely change from curds to something very different. And you will see that if you need a little bit more water, like I can see this one needs a little bit more. Yeah. So what I do is I first get my hands in there a little bit to make it nice. And then you can see. So now you can see how that structure has changed. You see? And, and, you, and you can, you know, and what I, in the beginning, you really have to get your hands in there. A lot of people, what they try to do is they, they try to kind of push that together like that. No, in the beginning, it's all about getting that hot water in that curd. So in the beginning, you just pull it open. And, then, and now and then, you can pull it out as well. And then you can see. And once the whole structure of the curds is gone, and you see that it's nice and smooth, then you can kind of start shaping it into whatever shape you want to have. And a good test, too, is kind of see, is like, you know, can you, can you make it nice and long? You see? So I like that. <laughs> so that's how, and that's how I squeeze the balls out of it. So what we've done for the farmer's markets, too, is to uh, make very tiny little ones. And I thought that would be a good idea. You know, might be something nice, like if you nice, uh, make a nice little serving portion and you don't have to cut it up. And it's basically, you can cut it into any, you can make it into any size, shape, or whatever you want. I'm not that artistic with how to braid mozzarella and all, all those kind of things, but basically you can see that you can do any kind of things uh, with that. So it's very easy to do it. What I've done is too, is like uh, you, can, you can spread it out make it like a pancake, put herbs on them, and then roll them back up. So it's, it's all about what you want to do. Yeah, you have to be a little bit careful if you, um, you don't want to put it at too cold, because if, you, if it gets too cold, it might stick too much on it. And you have to work really fast on it. Yeah. Another thing which can happen is that if you, like if you put too hot water in here with the curds and you start stretching it, that it becomes so soft and it really sticks to, to the sides. So that's another thing which you can often find. And, and another big thing is that whenever you use a bowl like this, make sure that it's one which is still nice and smooth, not one which has been cut up with knives and all that stuff, because that's where that mozzarella really gets stuck on. So. 
And then what you do is you want to cool that mozzarella down. Because right now, if you put this on a table, it's going to be completely flat. So what you want to do is you put it into a bowl with some cold water. It doesn't have to be ice cold water, just cold water. And what we do is we kind of prepare a brine for that. We, we kind of put, uh, it's cold water. Sometimes we actually put it in the cold room to, to cool down a little bit more because we have to put so much mozzarella into it. And uh, you put a little bit of salt in there. Now, if you just want to put it in there to cool down, and that's it, and then after that you take it out and you're going to eat it up, then there is no problem to do that. But if that is something where you want to keep the, brine, uh, the mozzarella in and you want to pack that with the mozzarella, then what you, what's going to happen is that mozzarella is, is many times what you, is, it will become slimy. And, and what happens is because that pH, the sourness of that water is, is, is not good enough. So if you wanted to keep it in, keep it with that brine, many times you have to add a little bit of citric acid or a little bit of an acid with that water too to make that sourness go down a little bit. But if you just want to keep it there, cool it down, and then serve it up, that's totally fine. That will work. And like this one I just did a little bit earlier, and you can see it keeps its shape right now. So you want to cut one up? You want to cut one up? Yeah, does what, anybody want to try this? So I have some smaller gloves too. Great. I'm sorry? Can you overdo it working the lump? Is it like dough? You can, uh, but what I like to do is I, I, I always want to minimize it as much as possible. I don't want to stretch it too much. Uh, what I found was that if I stretch it too much that I just didn't, it just it became kind of dry. It didn't keep as nice moisture in there. And yeah, overall the, the texture of the finished product was not the greatest. So what I try to do is, I want to try to keep as much moisture in there as possible. So what I try to do is, the moment I see the curd the curd structure has disappeared, that's where I start molding it into the shapes I want to have it. Yeah. The, the, it's very important to make sure that you get that water temperature and the curds right. Because if you start working with too, too low of a temperature of water, then it becomes too tough to work. And then if you have to warm that up again, then you're going to see a lot of times too, you're going to get a lot of fat separation on that product. It doesn't become as nice. So it, it's almost like you have to kind of really focus on getting that one shot right and just take the first one to practice, then the second one, then you know, then don't overdo it, just stick with that routine, and then that's what you get, the nicest mozzarella. So, okay, who wants to give it a try?